So there is a crow in the tree outside of my window today that seems to have a lot of opinions and also seems to want to share them with the entire neighborhood. So if we get a little guest appearance by audio <laughs> of said crow, then uh, you will know what's going on. But today I want to talk about some mindset shifts that will be key in getting you unstuck. These are deeper ones. It might take your brain a little bit of time to really kind of grasp these ones. And this might be one of those talks that you come back to and listen to several times before it starts to really connect and make sense. But I want to share them with you because they are so life changing when you truly understand them and start to implement them and really just live them. They will blow your mind and they will change your life. So stay tuned. Uh, if you're ready, I've got a lot for you today. If you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second, say hello in the comment section below. If you're back again, say hello. Always good to be with you. Um, if you haven't already, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be great. And yeah, either way, my name is Julia Christina, and I am a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and the creator of my incredible membership community, The Shift Society, where we are taking the concepts you are learning here to a deeper level and being supported the whole way through. There's more information about The Shift Society in the description below. I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And these mindset shifts that we are going to talk about, they will help you break through that crap that is holding you back. And you're going to see why as we go through them. So let's get right into this. The first one, the first truth that I want you to know is that people are not reacting to you. People are reacting to them. So what does this mean? If someone is being cruel or unkind or critical or snappy or rude or whatever that is, know that it is not about you. It is about their thoughts about you. So you are just existing in the world, doing what you're doing, acting how you're acting, being how you're being. And then that person has a thought about that they have an opinion or an idea of what you should or shouldn't be doing. And then based on that, they are going to have a reaction to that. And that reaction might look like being snappy with you, being rude with you, being critical towards you, you know, trying to do something to upset you or whatever that is. But knowing that it's because of their own interpretation of what you're doing and that interpretation, that idea not meeting their expectation. So let me explain this. Let's say that you are driving along and someone cuts you off in traffic and you get mad about it, right? And you start like cursing or like shaking your fist at them or whatever it is, or maybe you just don't do anything, you just sort of whisper some things, you know, under your breath. Know that you are not reacting to them. You are reacting to your thoughts about what they did. So you have an idea that someone shouldn't cut you off in traffic. That if you're driving along and someone swoops in in front of you, that that is unacceptable, that's rude, that's inconsiderate, and then you're going to get upset about that. So you're not reacting to them, you're reacting to your thoughts about what they've done. Because in a lot of cultures, you know, fast moving traffic, weaving in and out and people cutting each other off and people, you know, just sort of driving in these more sort of aggressive and what in my North American perspective would say chaotic way is completely normal. And someone would not get upset about that if that was happening in a place in the world where driving like that was the norm. It would be just, this is just the way people drive. It's not a problem. More often than not, problems are created in our own mind. When we have a problem with something, it's because we think it's a problem and then we have a reaction based on what we think is a problem. So really taking this in, and you know, especially if it's an example 
of the barista at your local coffee shop being rude to you or someone that you don't know giving you a dirty look and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so awful, you know, like they're so rude or they're so awful or, you know, this is about me in some way. To know that how can it be about you because they don't even know you. They are having a reaction based on what's going on with them. And so really just thinking about this concept when it comes to people acting a certain way, maybe even treating you a certain way, it is not about you. It's not because of you. It's because of what they have going on. People are re not reacting to you. They are reacting to their thoughts about you. Which brings us kind of to the next point. And this is another deeper concept and really just understanding that most experiences in life are neutral. And this might not seem like this big, profound, like earth shattering realization, but it truly is when we really start to grasp this, that most circumstances and situations in life are neutral and they have, we have a reaction to them based on the meaning that we give them. It takes a human brain to interpret something as a problem, as an issue, in order for the person to have a reaction to it. And I'm going to give you an example of this. So I was talking to someone recently who was quite upset with her partner because her partner had gone out for a night with his friends and they had agreed to this and it was totally fine. And, you know, he had gone out with his friends to have a good time and she was at home and she had gone to bed. And in her mind, she kind of thought, okay, my partner's out for a night out with his friends. A reasonable time to arrive home is maybe around two or three in the morning. And so she was sleeping and then she woke up at three in the morning, looked at the clock, saw it was three, and he still wasn't home. And so she started to get upset. And she texted him and said, you know, where are you? What's going on? He said, oh, okay, I'm coming home soon. Or, you know, I'll be, I'll just be a little bit longer. And so then she waited and waited and then, you know, he actually didn't get home until five o'clock in the morning. And she was really upset with him because she said, you know, this is unreasonable. This is disrespectful. This isn't fair. This isn't right. But the truth is him coming home at five o'clock in the morning is a neutral event. So someone, it's just a fact, you know, person was out, arrived home at 5 a.m. In order for that to be a problem, it took her brain interpreting that as a problem in order for it to become a problem. In his mind, she had said he could go out for the night and he was just like, okay, I'm just going to go out. I'm not going to have any restrictions. I'm not going to have any, you know, I'm not going to be in a rush to get home. I'm just going to kind of go where the night takes me. I'm just going to have this full night of freedom. And I'm just going to fully lean in and enjoy it because she said it was fine for me to go out with my friend. So he was thinking that it was fine for him to be out, that it wasn't a problem, that she was at home sleeping anyways. So it was no big deal. And so in his mind, there wasn't a problem. In her mind, there was a problem. But the truth is the whole thing was just a neutral event. And it did require them sitting down and talking about it and understanding the reason why it was a problem for her is because she had these unspoken ex expectations. They hadn't communicated what time was a reasonable time to go out, what he thought was a reasonable time or to come home, what he thought was a reasonable time to come home was different than what she thought was a reasonable time to come home. Neither of them had expressed that overtly. And so both people were, had different thoughts about the situation, which gave both people different reactions to it. But the event itself was neutral. And so they did end up talking about it and coming to a better understanding and agreed that they would be more forthright in their communication and, you know, not just sort of make these assumptions that would cause some of these, you know, end up coming up and causing some of these problems. So really being able to take a step back and look at that and be like, what am I saying is the right way or the reasonable way or, you know, the normal way? And then getting really upset when someone else isn't following that instead of understanding that they don't have the same idea of as you as the right way or the normal way or the, you know, respectful way or the appropriate way. So really being able to take a step back. What am I making this situation mean? And is it possible that somebody else could make it mean something 
else? Is this a hard and fast rule that this thing happened and this is automatically kind of the, 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 the like divine understanding that all human beings have about this thing? Or is this just my human brain having an idea about it? And that is what is causing the reaction in me. And now piggybacking off this concept that most things are neutral is being able to see most things you are doing as an experiment. So when it comes to goals that you have, dreams that you have, ideas that you have, things you want to do, things you want to try, things you want to experience in life, so often you are, I'm guessing, holding yourself back because you don't want to fail, because you don't want things to not go the way that you want them to go, because you're scared of what will happen if you do it. Instead of seeing everything as an experiment, something to try that doesn't have all of this weight on it, all these expectations on it, Seeing it as just something that you want to try, something you want to experience. And regardless of the outcome, you are going to be okay. So if you can start to see outcomes not as something to fear if you fail, seeing that whenever you try something, whenever you do something, whenever you put yourself out there and take something on, you are either going to win <laughs> or you're going to learn. You're either going to get the result that you want or you're going to learn something along the way. And then this means that, as I've talked about here before, there's not, there's no such thing as failure. I mean, there is such thing as failure, but if we could see failure as a neutral event, as I didn't get the result I wanted or expected, that's all that failure is. Again, it's a neutral event. It requires a human brain to make failure mean something. To make, uh, we have to upset ourselves about failure. It's not the failure that upsets us. If it's our thoughts about the failure, what we're making that mean. So, which also means that it's not the failure that we are fearing. It's, and it's not even what we're going to make that failure mean. It's what we're going to make the failure mean about us. That's what I fear. Whenever you have something that you want to try, that you want to do, that a goal that you want to reach, a dream that you want to realize, when you are stopping yourself, when you're holding yourself back, even when you're starting and stopping and sabotaging yourself, it's because there is uncertainty that you fear, but it's not the uncertainty that you fear. It's the result that you don't want, what you are going to make that mean. So if you get the result you don't want, it's what you are going to make that result mean about you. I'm not good enough. I don't have what it takes. I'm a failure. I'm not smart enough. I'm not competent enough. I'm not capable enough. I'm not lovable enough. I'm not worthy enough. Whatever that is. And so if you want to experience more in life, if you want to have a more full and rich and rewarding life, if you want to go after the things that are important to you, seeing everything as an experiment. The other part of it is you do have to clean up your thoughts about yourself when you get an outcome that you don't want. And that comes down to being able to trust yourself, being able to be there to catch instead of kick yourself when you fall is the foundation of that is being is self-trust. It's being able to trust yourself. And I have a guide that's going to teach you the steps to self-trust, to learning the key steps, to be able to trust yourself so that you can be there to catch yourself. So you can be there to not be criticizing and judging yourself, but to show yourself kindness and understanding and grace and compassion no matter what. Cut through that shame and self-blame that's going to require self-trust. You can get the guide. It's in the description below. Which leads us conveniently into the next one. Funny how that happens. In that we just talked about how it's not the outcome that we are afraid of. It's what we are going to make the outcome mean about us that we are resisting. Further to that, when it comes to what other people think of us, when it comes to our fears of judgment or criticism, 
It's not that we fear what they think about us. It's we fear what we are going to make it mean. People have thoughts about you. They have thoughts about me. You probably have thoughts about me. You probably have a lot of thoughts about me. (laughs) And other people, well, at the same time, other people probably have a lot of thoughts about you and they probably don't have a lot of thoughts about you. It's one of those things where it's like, we think people are always thinking about us. We think that other people are always looking for our flaws and trying to point things out and trying to, you know, shove things in our face. And so we're like conscious of our every move because we worry what people are gonna think about us. And the truth is, yeah, they might have thoughts about you. Most of those thoughts are gonna be fleeting. Most people are not sitting around trying to like look for what they could be judging or criticizing about others. And if they are, that's a whole other issue that you know they need to look at, but most people aren't. So yes, people do have thoughts about you. Yes, you probably do have thoughts about me. They're probably fairly fleeting, fairly insignificant, fairly inconsequential. But it's funny how we still fear so much about what other people are gonna think about us. And looking at how much of your life you are editing, how much of your life you are stopping yourself from living, how many things you are preventing yourself from doing because you are worried about what others are going to think about you. But as I just said, it's not even what other people are going to think about you. It's what you are going to make it mean. So again, what you are going to think about you. So I kind of feel like I scored when it comes to the caliber of online community because all of you here and the people on my Instagram account and on my Facebook page, the vast majority of you are here to learn, to support, to grow. You're not here to pick apart, to criticize, to condemn. I mean, every once in a while, there's someone like that that shows up, but the vast majority, the vast, vast majority of you are here for more constructive reasons, let's say. But the thing is, there are people that are gonna show up that are gonna have their thoughts about what I'm doing or not doing or what they think I should do or not do or what they think I should say or not say or whatever that is. They're gonna have those thoughts. My job is not to make sure that nobody ever has thoughts about me that I don't particularly appreciate. (laughs) My job is to decide what I want to make that mean and to decide what I wanna make that mean about me. That is my job. My job is to not control other people's thoughts or even control other people's words. My job is to get really good and solid in myself so that no matter whatever or whoever is going on around me, I can stand firm in who I am because I've built that relationship with myself because I have learned how to trust myself because I have more of that solid and secure sense of who I, in who I am. And that's not to say that things never get to me, that I never get my feelings hurt. I'm a human being, that, thing never, that things never hurt me. Not at all. But usually the things that bother me more are the things that are already kind of vulnerable for me. And so I might worry about people having a thought about me that I already have, and that's why it's sensitive. So I have to manage what I think about me instead of trying to control what other people do. Do you see how that works? And it also means that there's gonna be a lot of thoughts that people have about me that are not gonna bother me, that I'm, you know, are not gonna impact me at all because it's not something that I'm that I am already vulnerable about. And so if someone is to come on here and be like, you have, you know, weird hair, <laughs> that's not something that I feel vulnerable about. So I'd be like, okay, that's fine. Whatever, it's it wouldn't bother me. And so really looking at the things that people, that even often we think that people could think about us, often people aren't even saying these critical words out loud, but they're things that we fear people could think about us because they are our insecurities. So we need to be dealing with that. That's gonna be the thing that changes everything. 
It's not about controlling other people's thoughts about you or potential, even potential thoughts about you. It's about you getting solid in your thoughts about you. And that Simple Steps to Self-Trust guide is going to help you start on that path and lay that solid foundation. Also, when it comes to seeing things in more neutral ways, not getting so caught up in your thoughts, not getting so worked up about things, feeling more calm and balanced, I have a free 10 minute guided mindfulness exercise that's gonna be huge for that. It's gonna help train your brain to not get so worked up, not get so attached and reactive to the things that are happening outside of you and inside of you and help you see things in a more neutral way. It's gonna help train your brain with that. So I've got the simple steps to self-trust, that's in the description below. I've got that free guided mindfulness audio. You've got some things to go with from here. Would love to hear your thoughts about this. Share them in the comment section below. It is always good to have you here. And until next time, take good care.